Hey, thank you for joining us again for this week's midweek Bible study, Acts chapter 13. I am diving right in. We finished up in verse 4 and 5 last week. I want to go back to verse 4. I won't hang out here long, but here's what we read in verse 4 about Saul. I'll explain that in a minute. And Barnabas being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So Saul and Barnabas are into Cyprus, sent out by the Holy Spirit. So last week, you don't have to write this down. It's not in your notes. I just want you to remember who sent you. Remember why we share our faith. Remember why we make an extra phone call. Remember why we offer forgiveness. Remember why we send that text message or that direct message or that Facebook message. Or we pray with that person in private or in public. The one that we know or the one that we don't. Remember why we have these biblical habits and we're obedient. And who has sent us? Who has called us. Verse 5, when they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. So they went down, they arrived, they proclaimed. Upon arrival, they began proclaiming, and then when they were overwhelmed by whatever it was that they were encountering, apparently something arose, they had John assist them. Saul and Barnabas, ultimately known as the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Barnabas, asked for help. They had John, the Apostle, assist them. Let's go into this week. Verse 6, when they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet, named Bar Jesus. Okay, now that just simply means son of another Jewish man, probably named Yosef or Joseph, translated into Latin, translated into English, Bar Jesus or son of Jesus, son of Joseph. I almost got hung up on that and I had to study it out a little bit. So I wanted to share it with you so you didn't get hung up. Verse 7, he was with a proconsulate, proconsul, uh, proconsul, Sergius, this is interesting, Paulus, a man of intelligence who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. So in verse 7, what stood out to me just in these few verses was beginning the Holy Spirit sent them. And so they were really just being obedient to the Holy Spirit. They arrived and proclaimed. And they were letting God use them. Okay? So them just simply being obedient. Saul and Barnabas allowing God to just use them. This created curiosity. Allowing God or letting God use you will cause and create a sense of curiosity. I know uh, when we've gone out and we've just done some street evangelism, most of the time that stuff is planned. Sometimes it just happens impromptu. Somebody comes up and asks you something or tells you a situation or they confide in you. And, and I've developed this habit. I don't even like this habit. I don't like doing it. It makes me uncomfortable. But I've done it in multiple places in public, from parking lots to the corner of a gym to the aisles of Walmart. Um, when someone comes up and they ask you to pray for them, tell them you will pray for them. But because they asked, you have to pray with them. And if you've ever done that, if you look around when you begin to pray with someone, it creates, it's automatic, it creates this cloud 
of curiosity. That's why it makes us so uncomfortable because people start staring like, oh, my Lord, what are they doing? What's going on over there? Is something wrong? Oh, are they like performing some kind of seance? What's taking place? It creates it creates curiosity. Being obedient to Christ, specifically impromptu obedience, immediate obedience, public proclamation and prayer creates curiosity and God likes to use that God likes to show off in those moments let's look at verse 8 but Elimus the magician okay so this is the same guy bar Jesus the false Jewish prophet now he's Elimus um, the magician Elimus is just his Greek name okay where Bar Jesus was his Jewish name, or son of Yosef was his Jewish name. So this now Greek Jew magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them. Now Elimus, they called him Elimus in the Greek because it meant wizard. Okay, so this wizard is now opposing them. They've met this proconsul, this Roman. General, this Roman soldier, Sergius Paulus, and he's curious about the scripture that they're proclaiming and declaring. But now they've run into this magician, this wizard, who is opposing them and seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. So as they're trying to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, they've got this demonic spirit being manifest in this man in this magician who is opposing them so i just thought this was too good to let go it just happened to arise after the last two weeks worth of messages i think we need to write down and remember always that when we're obedient to god we can expect opposition like it's going to happen you can expect it And in inspecting, expecting opposition, you can't be overwhelmed by it. You just respond. Let's let's watch. But verse 9, but Saul, and this is the first time we see this, who is also called Paul. Okay, so did a little research into this one as well. Interestingly, Saul was who Paul was known as by the Jews. Saul was actually a very regal name. Uh, He actually was proud of his Jewish heritage. We see that in the book of Philippians. Paul was a Jew by descent of the tribe of Benjamin. And he, he used that name Saul. It was a regal name. But he was also a Roman citizen. So his name wasn't necessarily changed. But he was also known as Paul. That's just not what he went by. And all of a sudden, you remember Paul said, I'll I'll become all things to all men that many might be saved. And so when God began to use him to minister to the Romans and to the Gentiles, he became known as Paul because that was his Roman name. And Paul actually meant small or little where Saul was regal and majestic and in charge and pharisaical and in charge of murdering Christians right and and stifling the gospel he adopted or took on his surname or his second name Paul which meant little because he wanted to make himself little and, and make himself less so that Christ could become more interestingly enough the first time that he adopts this name or becomes known as this guy is with Sergius Paulus, a Roman soldier. I thought that was interesting. I hope it didn't digress too much. But Saul, who was also called Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit and looked intently at Elimus, the, the wizard, and said to him, You son of the devil... He's not playing around. You enemy of all righteousness. Okay, now listen, it's very, Paul is speaking to the spirit in this man. He's talking to whom he believes to be a demonic spirit, son of the devil, who has possessed a person 
who is about to learn a valuable lesson. You enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, you enemy, I'm sorry, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? Verse 11, And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind. Paul knew something about this. And unable to see the sun for a time, and immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. All right, so verses 9 through 11. Here's what we learn in expecting opposition. I believe that God has given us a spirit-filled right to resist the ridicule. To resist the ridicule. And when we resist the ridicule, I almost wrote rebellion because ridicule and rebellion to the gospel, they really go hand in hand. And I believe that we are called to resist this. Now, I I believe the way that we resist it is very important because we can walk away feeling really good about ourselves and actually becoming arrogantly spiritual. And I don't believe God's for that either. But we need to resist, especially when we're attempting to share the gospel and to share our faith. I believe it's okay when somebody begins to oppose us or when voices from the outside or opposition arises. We can resist that in Jesus' name. We can return. We can respond. And I believe we need to respond, not overreact and not react out of, not emotionally react. But I believe that we need to resist and we need to respond. And when we resist with ridicule and, watch, respond with righteousness, which sometimes is righteous indignation. But when we do that, watch what happens. Verse 12, the proconsul, the proconsul believed. The proconsul believed when two things happened. When he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Okay, I hope you have your Bible open because this is the last thing that I'm going to say and then I'm going to let you have this time to study Scripture for yourself. In this passage, what caused the unbeliever to believe? What caused, and right there in verse 12, what caused the unbeliever to believe? Digest this passage. Then go back and dissect your way through it. See what the Holy Spirit says to you. What do you observe? How does this apply to you? Maybe it's digging deeper into some of the points that I've made. Maybe it's discovering things for yourself that I haven't even considered. Dig deeper into God's Word and answer the question. God, in my life, how, how can you use me to help the unbeliever become a believer. Sergius Paulus became a believer in that moment. The Bible says when he saw and he was astonished by the teaching. So when the teaching of what they said lined up with what he saw, he surrendered. That's just one example. Look through and discover for yourself. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this passage. This first time that we know Saul the Pharisee, and we learn him as Paul, the Roman citizen, who was willing to lay down his position among the elite to serve and to proclaim the gospel, to make himself less so that you could become more. Lord, I pray right now that we would take the time to ask you, God, how does this apply to me? In what areas can I become less so that you become more? In what areas, in what ways could you use me in my everyday life, in my workplace, in my community, in my home, to help doubting disciples and or unbelievers grow stronger in their faith or even convert to the faith? Holy Spirit, help us. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for watching.